Welcome to Film Riot Mondays. Before we jump into questions, a little bit of follow-up from the last episode. We showed about making proxies inside of Adobe Premiere, and while doing that, I showed using H.264. A lot of people have asked why use H.264 or which one you should use, and some people saying not to use H.264, and I agree with those people. We showed H.264 in the demo because I didn't want to make files bigger than I needed to just for a demo, but then we didn't actually address that or talk about which format you would use and why you wouldn't really want to use H.264 most of the time because uh, it'll make your computer work faster to read those files where something like Cineform or ProRes will work a lot better, especially when you get much bigger uh, projects like the one we talked about with all the BTS. All of that is Cineform to try to make the leanest project possible and keep your computer from chugging at all. I have used H.264 with very small projects when I really wanted to keep all the file sizes that were going on a hard drive that I was using very small, but that is the only time that I've ever used H.264 for proxies. And now, with that out of the way, let's get into questions. First question, if you could interview and spend time with any film director, dead or live, who would you choose and why? I think anybody that knows me or this show very well knows that I'm about to say Steven Spielberg, and that's because, in my opinion, he's the greatest filmmaker who ever lived. Not everybody's going to agree with that, of course. That is a subjective thing. But I think he's absolutely incredible. The stories he chooses to tell, how he chooses to tell them, how he could put so much heart and theme uh, and meaning inside of a genre film is really inspirational to me and something that I absolutely want to do. And nobody blocks like that, man. It's just glorious. How do you get the confidence to start a short film? I've written a script, but I don't know what the problem is. I'm just nervous to get anywhere near started on it. Any advice? Just get out there and do it. You shouldn't be waiting for me to give you a reason or an excuse to do it. You should just have to. That You know, with me, it's I'm passionate enough about film that I don't have a choice. I have to do it. I have to be creating. I have to get out there. No matter how horrifying it is, you know, before certain projects that were big enough, I dry heaved on my way to go and direct. There was a part of me that didn't want to do it that was just like forget it turn the car around because it's really freaking scary but you're just so passionate about it that you have to no matter how scary it is no matter how much fear of failure you have you just have to and if you don't have that passion maybe that's something that you need to be thinking about maybe this is more of a hobby for you and not a career if it is a career for you you need to shut that part of your brain off stop making excuses and just do it i really admire the way birdman was filled making it look like one continuous shot for the entire movie i know they actually use sneak editing to make it appear here, like it was one shot even though it isn't would you ever consider shooting a short in that style how would you begin approaching it is it too difficult to execute on no budget production as i have an idea for a short that would really benefit from the use of this technique in respect to the tone and atmosphere good lord that was a very long but good question i would definitely do it if it made sense for the story it worked in birdman so well because it made complete sense for the story that they were telling thematically and what it was just it was about a play and it was sort of shot in that way we weren't cutting away and doing that typical thing. We were living inside of the moment like you would watching a play, but then also what the character was going through as well. So I wouldn't do it as a gimmick. I would make sure that it was not a gimmicky thing, that it is what the film wanted and needed. And if the answer is yes, I don't think it's that difficult to do. You could definitely do it on a low budget. You just find ways uh, to make it more approachable than some of the ways it did in Birdman. In Birdman, there were more visual effectsy moments uh, that take a lot more uh, skill and know-how how to pull off, but for me, it could be something as easy as moving past a wall, a door, a car swipes by, using things like that um, to shift from one scene to the next. They, they even did certain things like that in the film uh, that we could absolutely replicate on zero budget. Just someone walking by the camera uh, and using that wipe of the lens to cut between takes. You could mask around that actor to reveal the next tape, or they could close the lens entirely and have a moment of black that that does it very easily. There's a lot of very easy ways uh, that you can pull off connecting those things. But again, I think it worked because it wasn't a gimmick. It made complete sense for the film. It's what the film wanted. So if you're going to do something like that, found footage, any of those things that could be gimmicky could spell death for your story if they are gimmicky and your audience feels that. It has to be uh, organic to the story you're telling. What short has been the most fun to make? Proximity was one of the most fun for me. And I think it was just because of how how difficult it was. We didn't have anything. We went to this 300 
acre middle of nowhere place to shoot it there were snakes and i had a machete to clear paths for my actors and we were sweating and during one take there were red ants crawling up my legs and biting me but todd and josh were nailing it so i didn't want to call cut so i just let it happen and i don't know there's something about the difficulty um when making something that makes it so much more valuable and fun to me for some reason i don't know maybe that's just i there's i do hate myself internally or something i just want punishment or something i don't know but that was definitely one of the most fun and ballistic would probably follow up to that uh in as most fun but then again ghost house chainsaw they're, they've all been a blast but i proximity and ballistic brought such challenges and difficulty um in pulling it off that i think that's why i kind of had the most fun doing it i really like a challenge there's nothing more discouraging than having a pile of overdue paperwork just sitting there staring at you while you try to work or do anything you enjoy at all. Well, our friends at FreshBooks have a cloud accounting software that give you more time to do the work that you love and not feel discouraged by the paperwork demon. FreshBooks has been redesigned from the ground up and custom built for the way that you like to work. It's the easiest way to be more productive, organized, and most importantly, get paid quickly. The new FreshBooks is not only ridiculously easy to use, it's also packed full of powerful features. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds, set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. And now, of course, FreshBooks is giving you a 30-day unrestricted free trial when you go to freshbooks.com forward slash film right and enter film right in the how did you hear about us section. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. And this one is extremely self-serving because it's the Film Riot podcast, which is my podcast, which comes out tomorrow, finally. And I'm really, I'm really excited about that. Our first guest is David Sandberg, director of DC's Shazam. He talked about everything from going from low budget to big budget film as far as directing goes, prepping, uh, pitching, which you heard in the preview. If you did hear our preview, working with actors, he was really honest and it was uh, very insightful. So definitely definitely check links below where you can go subscribe uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. I don't think it's on Spotify yet, but it's going to be on Spotify as well very soon, but it should be everywhere else. If it's missing from anywhere else uh, that you like to listen to your podcast, just shoot me a tweet and we'll figure out how to get it on there. But until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. <laughs>